Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the adoration of the shepherds. You will see that God chooses the poor and lowly things of this world to make the good news of his saving grace widely known. Again, the evangelist Luke records the shepherds resolved to go see their newborn king. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. So far the text, let us pray. O dearest Christ child, bless thy word that we may trust in thee. Amen. For a few weeks, one summer break from college, I took a job working night shift at the local newspaper. I already had a daytime job more than sufficient to pay for the next school year, but I would need sleep. With a daily circulation of about 20,000 copies, our local news office employed a writing staff, editors, photographers, a marketing department, but all that happened during daylight hours. The night shift was hired at minimum wage for the medial task of simply standing around the printing press, prepping bundles of papers to be picked up for delivery before the crack of dawn. My co-workers that night shift were quite unlike the fellow college students I worked with during the day. Every time the printing press jammed up, broke down, they would cheer ever eager for an impromptu smoke break. In those huddles, which I joined for lack of anything else to do, they bickered with one another as to whose fault it was the machine broke down this time, told lewd stories, complained about life in general. It seemed they couldn't stand each other the entire shift. Till daybreak, when the only other people they knew still awake they turned into best of friends, wandering off together to a place I was not old enough to enter, where they went to unwind, and no doubt tell even more colorful stories. I did not last long at this job by my choice. I'm not sure many of you would have either. Yet, it was to this kind of news crew the Christmas angels appeared. To this kind of crew that was hired by God to publish the good news of the birth of his son. You see, the shepherds who watched the flocks by night, they were not the most reputable of fellows. Those who worked the night shift weren't the landowner's children, nor the flock's primary caretakers. They were hired hands given the menial task of simply making sure the sheep survived the night till the owners woke up and returned. You do not aspire in life to become a night shepherd. Uneducated, underprivileged, it was the kind of job you ended up with on account of lackluster work experience or your reputation about town, you might have been left with little to no other option. By Jesus' day, those with more successful life skills, considered those boxed into such lines of work as sheep herders, to be sinners. Misusing the term sinner from the misconception that how you went about life got you somewhere with God. An upward mobility concept of righteousness, sinner, had become a broad sweeping judgment more akin to low life or can do no better, a judgment from which no night shepherd could escape. I'm sure at least a few of these shepherds live that stereotype up to the detriment of the name of the rest. Like my night shift co-workers, quick to bicker, their talk filled with suspect stories, 
never complaining about life in general. And at the end of their shift, want to go out and party a bit at the crack of dawn. But for however stuck they felt they were in their reputation as sinners, it could not stop our God from putting them to the most wholesome of news reporting work. And with amazing result, as the good news trumpeted into these shepherds' ears, makes them all of a sudden the most pious and upstanding of fellows, who unite their voices in a conviction to believe and follow through on the word of the Lord. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass. This gospel lesson serves as proof passage concerning the power of God's Spirit in the heart, that His Word works regardless who speaks it, regardless how anything appears. The well-to-do of society, Herod and all his Bible scholars living the high life in Jerusalem, they ignore every single prophecy of old concerning the birth of Bethlehem. It is by spirit-given faith alone that sinners come and adore him, adore a baby in dirty diapers, laid in a manger, the scene of recent childbirth, adore all this as heaven come to earth. And yet more miraculous that when this night shift begins, publishing the news of everything they had seen that holy night, all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by, of all people, shepherds. The rest of small town Bethlehem believes news delivered from the mouths of those they would any other day be suspicious of anything they were up to, loitering about town so early in the morning. This would be a theme of everything Jesus came to do. For Jesus, the Son of God, had left his eternal majesty behind to be born of a virgin, a, a scandalous story from the start, and take on the appearance, likeness, and reality of our humanity in poorest, most meager form. The pictures you find of Jesus in most churches and children's books make him look like a prince, fair of skin, neatly groomed, wearing crisp, clean robes. But as the scriptures reveal, the true Jesus was a touch unappealing to the eye, almost repulsive to those who lived the high life. Such that years later, when this infant so lowly grows up to be a man wandering the countryside homeless and claims, I am the good shepherd, it would have looked the part. And how fitting, for Jesus had come to take on the dirty job no one else could, to lay down his righteous life for yours, to save you from sin and death. A message which would be openly delivered by another ragtag group of sinners, men Jesus had hired three years prior, a, a group of disciples consisting of fishermen, a tax collector, and the rest, who after leaving their former lives to wander about with Jesus, must have looked as rough in appearance as those shepherds who spread the news of his birth. At first, the holy words they announce in Jerusalem's city center were dismissed as drunken babble, as if fresh off night shift that day of Pentecost. But when you listen carefully, you hear the good news which the angels desire look in, to look into, the good news of the forgiveness and grace to be found in Jesus' death and resurrection. 
as poor Peter proclaimed, God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. You see, that term sinner, which had come to mean not going about your life the right way according to men's standards, the shepherd choices of our God throughout Bible history prove what a misconception that was. The word itself is a real one, though. Sinner, referring to all those who have not gone about your life the right way to God's standard. And in that sense, sinner is the broadest of sweeping judgments, including each of us here. A status before your God, which no upward mobility, no human work or effort can do a thing about. But the gospel, which brings peace, goodwill from heaven to earth, is that the child born of Mary can and has lifted you out of the low life of sin you can do nothing about, freeing you from death and hell into eternal life with him. And what more, calling you this day to circulate the good news of his kingdom come. This publishing requires no writing staff. Everything's already recorded in full. Definitely no editors. No word of Holy Scripture need ever be changed. No fancy photography. No marketing. The sole appeal being the work of the Spirit in the heart alone as he comes to you through this holy word. Thus, he calls sinners like you and me out of the night of sin into the daylight of his marvelous grace to deliver salvation and eternal life by word of mouth, simple speaking and humble service to all those you encounter, just as those shepherds who first beheld the gospel bundled up in a manger and from there delivered it crack of dawn from door to door. May each of you who through word and sacrament welcome the Christ child today, be blessed the same. Learning from the shepherds who behaved so differently at the end of their shift that night, the gospel's power to exalt your lowly soul the same. That the entrance of the Christ child into your heart and home might ease the bickering common to each household into the kind of unity which only the Spirit can provide. As the shepherds resolved with one heart and one mind, let us now go and see this thing which is come to pass. Good news which replaces our complaints of life in general with the plain repetition of the greatest news that the world has ever seen. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And finally, like those shepherds, who at the end of the day went right back to their formerly dead end jobs, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, overcome the urge to quit, like I did quit, those jobs which seem a touch beneath you. For your God has placed you right where he needs you to be. For his redeeming grace yet to shine. Just as much as he chose the manger to be the place and the mouths of lowly shepherds the means for himself to reveal his saving love to lost man. For the Christmas gospel teaches how in the kingdom of God, the lowly work of love can be holy work indeed. Now the peace that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.